need? What do we need to strengthen our military? Um, basically, give them a blank check. Here, get it done. Get it done. We need to protect. We need to protect America because at the time, Russia, Russia was our biggest threat. So he was one of the biggest. Like he doesn't get enough credit for being a, a good negotiator. He was a great negotiator. Like he he uh, he knew that. I mean, he knew that Russia was. Russia's economy was in shambles at the time, and and he knew that uh, he basically always negotiated from a power for, from a position of strength, and that's something that this president does not do, uh, which is something I miss so much. Which is why I think Donald Trump is resonating with me because I feel like he can he can negotiate from a position of strength, not from a position of weakness. I mean, look at look at look who represents us with these with, with these uh, with these uh, you know like the Iran deal. We have John Kerry. He's such a yeah, puss. Just, He's such a puss. He's always negotiating from a position of weakness. And it's time to it's time to bring back that's one of the the best qualities that Ronald Reagan had. He wanted to protect our sovereignty. He wanted to protect the Americans and he always negotiated for a position of strength. Yes, he was not perfect. He was not perfect. He lowered taxes. Um, initially, he had a he had an economic boom, but then it, you know it it, it was an ebb ebb flow of, of of the economy. But ultimately, he 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 ranks as one of the best presidents ever. He's been the last true conservative president that we've had. Yeah, and um, I think uh, one one story I I heard of Reagan. It was I'm not I'm not very detailed on it, but um, some people were protesting, and this is their job, I guess. And he was just like, it was it was he's the, like, fuck it, it was, leave. Yeah, it, I don't need you. I'll find some other some other people that take your job. It was the the uh, the air the uh, controllers the air the airline controllers the um the the controllers the uh, you know the the the, the controllers the uh, TSA controllers whatever the hell you call them. the uh, yeah. The, yeah, you know the, the airport controllers, and he basically fired all of them, basically. So that's, that's yeah. He was just like they were protesting, and just like no, fine, leave. He, and they were just, I bet they were like, oh my god. Yeah, he was. He was the first one that pro- probably, uh, you know, had the trademark of uh, "you're fired." <laughs> he was. He was. He, he's the original. Yeah. He's the original Donald Trump. <laughs> he didn't play. He didn't yeah. play. That's and one thing. I've, yeah. I've, I've always had a question with power. Mm-hmm. So, like, when when is it, Chris? Like, where it, it's too much? Like, say this is this is extreme. Okay, so like Donald Trump and Ted Cruz get in a fight, and then Donald Trump punches Ted Cruz and says, "Like, I will never back down." <laughs> so like, when is it too much? When is it too much? Well, that's 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 an extreme uh, analogy. There, that's an extreme. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, it's so that would probably be too much, but but I feel like with can you imagine like back then if 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 Rubio was making a joke about about Donald Trump's penis size? Like, well, well, that's you, what he did. Yeah, well, you you didn't you didn't live through it uh, the Donald Trump uh, you know campaign, but if you, if you read if you read the history, uh, they basically use the same tactics that they're using now on Donald Trump. They used it back then. It was just as dirty. Just because it's just because it's 2016, it's the same playbook and Donald Trump is playing from a different playbook and that's what annoys that's what annoys the establishment the most he's playing from a different playbook they're playing from the old playbook and the old playbook was being run back then during uh, when uh, Donald Trump was running they call him a racist they call him you know KKK or you know the same thing they're doing now it's the same playbook it's the same exact playbook and if you and if you and if you go there's a cool doc- documentary that I bought on iTunes, you know, about Ronald Reagan. It, it, it describes, you know, the, the uphill battle. I mean, they called him, they called him stupid. They called him, you know, uh, uh, uneducated. Uh, you know, they call him everything in the book. I mean, racist. I mean, you name it. The same playbook they use that they used on him. They're using it on Donald Trump. It's the same playbook. And I kind of have going to this uh, this rally. I kind of was not really too satisfied because what rally was that? Was that the Donald Trump rally? We have we have two minutes. Uh, yeah, like, quickly tell us tell us about the Donald Trump rally. Well, it was it was like I said, it was a lot of um, a lot of criticism that I, I I really didn't like like, and it was just it was targeting people that were uneducated. I feel like, right. and that's what his plan is, and I'm sure. He does. He does have a plan, but he's he's. That's what his plan is to like, get a bunch of people to like vote for him that haven't voted for, and like, wow, this guy's powerful, and they don't really know much. And I think this is this is what I think here, Chris. Like, you got a this minute. is a crazy analogy, but I came up. I got I, yeah. I, I came up with this analogy, and I thought this is what the Republican. This is this is what the Republican um, GOP looks like. I feel like it's like so. You you see. Um, let's just use three. Well, 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 no Ben Carson, no Kasich. You right. see three cakes, 
Okay. Every president has their own cake. And this is a like, what's what's the best cake contest, right? So you you can't you can't go into these cakes. You don't even know if it's chocolate, vanilla, right. or whatever. Right. It could be hollow. Right. It could be hollow cake, okay. and it just looks big. And I feel like that's what Donald Trump just has a big cake and nobody wants to know the ingredients. They're just satisfied for how big it looks, but nobody really wants to know the ingredients of the cake. And I want to know every policy, every plan. And have you been, have you been, to, we're losing ha, policy. have you been, have you been to his website and uh, have you seen his trade, his trade uh, plan and his immigration plan? One of my biggest, uh, before, before I let you go, one of my biggest complaints about Donald Trump is that he should memorize those and every rally he goes to just read it. I mean, he doesn't even need to memorize. Just read the plans, because if you read the plan, especially his immigration plan, it is brilliant. It is brilliant. His immigration plan is brilliant. He should. That's my. That's my criticism. That's one of my criticism about Donald Trump. He should memorize those and preach those at every single rally. To. Sh- I mean, he still won't shut up the. You know, he he still he's still not going to shut his detractors up. But at least. Do we, do we take that off the table where people say, well, he's, he doesn't have a plan. Just go to his website. Everything is there. But again, listen, I want to thank you for being on my show. We got to run. Uh, you want to give everybody your information, uh, your Twitter account so they can follow you on Twitter? Um, you guys can follow me on Twitter at W McKee, W-M-C-K-E-E 32. And that's W-M-C-K-E-E 32. Awesome. Awesome. That's my Twitter account. Awesome, man. Thanks for being on my show. All right. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for having me. When you're on the right, depend on us. The Internet's new conservative radio network, CRN. All right, my next guest, uh, Janine Stang, is uh, is known as the National Anthem Girl. And uh, she made history uh, recently by completing her mission to sing uh, the, the Star Spangled Banner in all 50 states. Uh, she is a uh, actually a New York, uh, Long Island native, uh, my ne- in my neck of the woods. And uh, she's been featured on uh, shows such as uh, Fox and Friends, uh, NBC uh, Nightly, uh, CBS, CNN, Fox, uh, MSNBC. She's been all over the place. And uh, at this time, I want to welcome in uh, Janine. How are you, Janine? I'm doing well, Chris. How are you? Good. Where are you now? You're, you're in California, right? <laughs> I'm away from any kind of snow. I hear um, you guys. It got hit again, right? Well, uh, we, we we got hit uh, hit again, but the, uh, the the good thing is that uh, it's it's been kind of warm, so a lot of it has melted. So we're oh, we're good. we're in pretty good shape, but I'm sure you don't miss that. I don't miss it. Uh, although I found myself complaining a couple nights ago that it's been cold in LA, and I've been I haven't I've been off the road for about three weeks, so. Okay. I just have been noticing that I had had my heat on a couple of nights, and I know that <laughs> boo-hoo. I have no right to complain. <laughs> boo hoo, boo hoo. So let's get let's get right into it. Um, you know, sure. so basically, you completed a, is just a Guinness Book World Record or something like that, where you where you sang. Uh, you know, I mean, it probably is. Um, although I never really wanted to. Nothing against Guinness Book of World Record holders. Mm-hmm. This was more of a passionate pursuit to uh, really help promote a dialogue of patriotism and honor for our nation's heroes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, uh, no one's ever done it before. I guess it's more of like a historic uh, whatever effort. <laughs> right. So so, so basically, the, uh, tell us the reason behind it. I mean, you just briefly expl- explained it there. But uh, tell, tell I mean, us. You're, you're from New York. I, I, I started singing the national anthem back when I was in high school on Long Island and uh, just kept doing it because I loved it. And then it was one day when Saving Private Ryan was out on DVD. I got to see it. Uh, I just remember crying like it was one of my own relatives, you know, just all of them. That I felt after you watched that whole movie, it, mm-hmm. it really impacted me. And I remember at the very end when he said, earn this, earn it, I, I just... Yes, I know it was a movie and it's Hollywood, but at the same time, I was like, that was sort of like a point that I always remember saying, I'm going to do everything I can. And I knew that if I tried to, you know, went into the service, I'd be more like Saving Private Benjamin (laughs) rather than Saving Private Ryan. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what, every time I sing the national anthem, I'm going to do it with everything I've got. And it really started to organically evolve into something where I got to meet different people who have sacrificed so much, the families of those who have given their all, their lives. And it just 
built into a point where I said, I've got to do something because I would sing. I mean, I sang you know, the, the Islanders, you know, on Long Island, a lot of places, mm-hmm. the Knicks, Nets. Um, but when I would sing to large crowds, I would say, gosh, this is an opportunity. If I could attach a really good cause, I could really make a difference. I could do something to help those who embody the meaning of the song. So, and that's so, really what the whole goal was. Okay. So uh, who, who are you basically helping here? What, what are the charities that, that, that you're, you're helping out? Here? Well, you know what? I am my own nonprofit and I also have distanced myself from a lot of charities just because I found out a lot of them don't do exactly what they say they're going to do. And I said, you know what? I am my own nonprofit. And um, I, although I don't necessarily raise money, there's one thing that I've done at every uh, event, uh, I think it's marking from like the 20th estate on, I had a table where people would be able to come up and sign blank thank you notes um, that go into military care packages. And uh, Operation Gratitude is a great organization that's run completely by volunteers, Mm -hmm. and they put together care packages that go to people who are deployed as well as uh, veterans. And I said, you know, a lot of times people are always asking for money, and and it's uncomfortable. I don't like asking anybody for money. But one thing I felt is like, you know what, I could ask them for their time. That's that's something where I watched people who came up to the you know my table after I signed the anthem, kind of like, yeah, sure, I'll sign a card. By the time they were done, it was like ten minutes later, and their countenance was different. They felt like they had done something where they made a connection, or they would be making a connection with somebody who was overseas who could use that encouragement. And I said, you know, it's not all about yeah, sure, everybody's got to raise money. I get it, but a little scary sometimes with these places that you don't know where you're putting your money in, but I really know, I can vouch for the fact that I know each of those cards were placed into a care package and it, it made the day. You never know. It was, it was, uh, it was so through. basically it was something tangible because a lot of people, a lot of times, you know, yes. uh, people say you like, throw money, five bucks, yeah, whatever, it, it's, who cares? It's like, well, it's like uh, during Christmas, you know, when people give other people money and stuff, Probably. it's very impersonal. Yeah. It's very impersonal. Yeah. Something like yeah. this is very tangible, very, very personal. So yeah. I can see, I, can and see I still do it. Right. Yeah. I mean, even after doing it, you know, I said, I don't want it to stop just because I'm not, you know, it's not part of that effort anymore. And wherever I go, in fact, uh, middle of this month, I'm saving at an event. It's a golf outing. Mm-hmm. But I said, can I have a table so people could sign cards? And on my Twitter uh, and Facebook, I daily tweet out and say, can you take the time to write out five thank you notes to our troops and veterans? I'll supply the cards. Literally, all people have to do is send an email to me, admin at nationalanthemgirl.org with their mailing address mm-hmm. so that I can give them five cards and then they send them back to me and then I give them over to Operation Gratitude. Um, awesome. And I've got hundreds of people who have done that uh, oh. just for the online thing. Right. You know, so. Awesome. You also got involved in the, because uh, uh, we, we got involved this year with the uh, uh, Reeds Across America. Yeah. Uh, locally. Yes, I love that. Yeah, we, we got involved here locally in New York City um, and uh, it was kind of uh, disappointing when uh, we, we didn't raise enough money to cover all the uh, the headstones at the uh, Veterans Cemetery, we will, uh, we only raised enough for sixteen hundred, and there are another eighteen thousand that that didn't have any any wreaths on, and it wow. was kind of disappointing. Wow. So tell us about that. You're also involved with that, correct? Yeah, uh, just this year, um, well, last year rather, uh, with JB Hunt, which is a transportation company, um, they asked me to go with them to Maine. So I flew out to Maine on December fourth. And I really had no idea what this what this was going to be about because I'd never even sat in a semi truck. Mm-hmm. But I was <laughs> going to eight different states, eleven different stops. So from wow. December fourth to December thirteenth, I was in a semi truck. Wow. I had such an incredible time. And you know what? I had I heard a lot of people say for those who, who you're listening who are listening don't know what Reese Across America is. It's their mission to put a wreath to lay a wreath at the grave of every veteran Mm -hmm. in America and also abroad. But I had a couple of people say to me like, what's the, okay, so you got to spend 15 bucks for a wreath. I mean, the person's not there all due respect, but Mm -hmm. what's the point? And I, I, you know, of course, some comment like that, of course, going to get you aggravated, but you want to have a really good response. And from going to each of these different stops and also just meeting the founders and, and hearing the different stories, gold star families have a way and an outlet to 
uh, congregate, to heal, to talk about these different things. And it's really what we're all about, and that's tradition. Mm -hmm. You know, we are all about honoring. So what I always say it did. It changed my life to be able to see that. And now when people say something like that, I'm like, listen, this is, yes, it's about honoring those lives.